weight belt or not weight belt, gear or not gear, should you know should you wear a certain gear? And then I'm gonna offer something um, I do occasionally at home that I think works really really well for especially for those of you that have maybe like tight hips or knees are bothering you, etc. Um, you pro- I don't know how comfortable you'd be doing this at the at the commercial gym, but I mean, who cares what people think, right? And you, you might. You might have to do some modification to the clothing in order to not get in trouble with the gym staff. But anyway, what is it? I'll tell you at the end of this video. In the meantime, subscribe to my channel. Ever growing me topping head, talking head videos in my car. Hopefully, going to expand to that. Do some more ex- do some exercise videos and um, some demonstration stuff as well. Uh, like this video if I'm liking it. All right, weight belt or not? Let's keep this simple. If you don't have to wear the weight belt, don't. Pretty simple. Um, you know, they think about off, uh, people have, I've worked in warehouses over the years, a student, and maybe some of you still working in a warehouse and, you know, the warehouse belt where you, you know, it goes over shoulder strap and you cinch it up and it keeps your trunk strong. And the problem is, you know, I'd see guys at the warehouse wearing it all day for every task. And so, um, the belt might be helpful. Let's say stacking a pallet, you know, or if you have a, a you know, a trailer to stack, uh, it might be helpful, you know, in a hot, if you ever start, if you've ever loaded a 53 footer, you know, that's a pretty tough and, you know, heat, I mean, you're working hard and you gotta get, you gotta go fast. Um, something like that. Sure. But if there's other tasks that you don't need it, great. Even better. If your trunk musculature is strong enough that you don't need it at all, even better. Okay. And so you want to use to support as little as possible. This could go from orthotics. It could go like taping ankles, even shoes, right? Just, I mean, keep this in reason here. I'm not telling you to go barefooted. Um, but the reality is, is if you, if you, if you stabilize muscles, they get weaker. I mean, that's just how it works. And so, you know, conventional wisdom, like with the belt is don't, you know, anything over 85%, you could use the belt. Um, I would say, even if you don't, if, even if you can, if you don't need it, even then don't feel like you have to, uh, the belt also provides a false sense of confidence. If you don't believe me, go to a high school powerlifting meet and watch these kids pulling deadlifts. I mean, it's, it's brutal. And it's, I know there's a con, a lot of controversy about positioning with deadlifts, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, I don't care who you are. You watch these kids lift and they are not, they're setting themselves up for an injury. Um, the way that they're pulling the bars cause they're pulling maximal weight. So even if you subscribe to this exercise technique jargon, you know, stuff that's going around, doesn't matter. Um, they're going to hurt themselves. Okay. Either in the moment acutely or over time, by the way, they're pulling these bars and it has a lot of it has to do. They put this belt on and you can just see their face like, Oh, I mean, uh, it's, I'll be honest. I did the same thing. Right. Um, so the belt is a tool and you have to learn how to use it. So you have to learn how to breathe into the belt, how to still stabilize. It's not like you cinch that thing up as tight as possible. And then you just pull, you still have to learn how to push into the belt. Uh, and it, it is possible that, you know, you cinch that thing up so tight that you, you essentially destabilize the muscles. Like if you've ever done that, you, it's really, really tight and it feels really, really good, but it's really hard to, what I'm getting at is, is pushing into the belt with the musculature of your trunk. It's kind of difficult because it's so tight. So again, there's a technique to using the belt, essentially. Um, it's not just a, you put it on and then don't worry about your trunk muscles, right? Um, it's supposed to be just something to, to kind of enhance that. So not anti-belt, uh, but try to use it as little as possible. I did a powerlifting meet without a belt. Now I wasn't squatting 700 pounds either. Okay. So, you know, let's, let's put this into perspective, but, um, the whole point was that I went up to my maximum that day without a belt. Um, you may not be able to do that. I get it. So uh, some people with short torsos might have some more challenges, especially when you're dead, you know, deadlifting a short torso and long legs, you know, that could be really, really challenging. Maybe a belt gives you a little extra stability. So I'm not against it. It's just, can you, can you do as much as possible without it? Um, other gear like wrist wraps and stuff like that wrists. Um, I, I would say the same thing right? Um, obviously wrists in an area that can be a little more tender. They can, um, that's an, that's a joint area. I would just say, if you have a wrist problem, that's manifest itself, um, find out why, <laughs> like that goes for any injury, but r- my experience with Olympic style weightlifters, right? Um, you have to be very careful with snatch volume and when wrists get angry, um, one, we look at the pre training mobility program. Uh, I love wrist distraction, so putting bands up and then, you know, pulling the wrist open as you go through deviation. So, you know, side to side like this, you hold the band, really strong band and pull, just basically trying to pull your wrist apart because you're getting some sort of compression in there. Um, so wrist wraps, there's a variety. There's the big kind of donut 
you know, clunk, you know, big hulking ones. And then there's one of the ones that are the conforming kind of strength wraps. Find one which one that works for you. Like there is no magic bullet there. Um, whatever is bothering your wrists, um, one of those may provide the stability you need. So I'm not against like wrist wraps. I'm just saying if wrists, especially if a wrist problem has just started, uh, really look at what's going on. Look at your mobility program. There's some really good wrist mobility um, programs on YouTube. Um, but that's kind of the other one along with backs. Usually wrists are are one of the other issues. I get there's there's a, a myriad of other things we talk about. Shoulders, elbows, of course, knee wraps. Um, knee wraps would fall and knee sleeves would fall into the same category. Don't use them unless you need them. Knee sleeves in particular are one of those things, especially if you're talking about like things like squatting. Once you start using them, it's very difficult not to. <laughs> so um, I still would, the same kind of rules though. You might find you need the knee sleeves. I'm talking more like Olympic style weightlifting too, where the, you know, you're getting some really, you know, you're getting full depth all the time. And if we're like, doing cleans and stuff, you're getting depth under, you know, like the load is coming down on you. Um, hopefully not too much, but the load is, you know, there's a lot of eccentric loading going on, but once you start wearing sleeves, it's really hard to get off of them. Um, and so <clears throat> try not to put them on until you need to, like when I work with the young lifters, they don't want them to wear sleeves until they have to. And then even in those squat warm up sets, when, if you are using them, try not to, um, again, it, it depends on who you are. If you, if your knee is really bad and it's really tore up, you know, over the years, it's, um, you might need to sleep the whole time. So. Um, that could be one though, again, like use it as you need. You can roll the sleeves down depending on what kind of sleeves they are and then roll them up as you need them. Um, ankles, little as possible. Um, you know, if we're talking athletics, that's a whole nother ball game, but still try to use as little as possible. All right. What's the, the thing as I finish this up, what's the, the kind of silly thing I, I did? Well, if you look at, if you guys have been around powerlifting or seen powerlifting meets, you know, geared lifting, right? So they're wearing squat suits and bench shirts and, you know, uh, one of the, one of the materials that we use in bench shirts, you don't see as much as you used to, but you still do, is denim. So jeans, right? Um, so in the home gym, uh, there's times where I'll squat in my jeans. And maybe some of you've already done this, but um, if you're if you're kind of older, uh, a little beat up like I am, um, consider squatting in jeans, especially on your heavier days. Again, it depends on the jeans, um, what they're you know how flexible they are, stretchy they are, you know if they're skinny jeans or whatever, but you usually want a, a jean that is fairly tight. Um, and you're like, man, that's really restrict my range of motion at the bottom. Exactly. Okay. Especially when it gets heavy. So it's kind of like a very cheap squat suit, right? And depending on how they fit around your knees, you might find they even give you some support there as well. So, um, just something to consider. I know it's a little silly. If you go to the gym, they probably would say, don't do that because the rivets on your jeans will tear up our upholstery. Um, but if you're just squatting, I mean, you could try to sell, Hey, I'm just going to squat. I won't lay on your benches. I'm just here to squat today and look strange in my, my jean squats. Um, uh, but I mean, people wear stranger stuff to the gym these days than that. Um, if you're, if you're an older person though, and, and I say older, again, depends on joint health, it could be 35 all the way up to 85. Um, consider squatting in jeans when you're doing your lower extremity work. Uh, you might find that, um, you feel, but I do it again. I do it at the home gym. Um, it was, inadvertently at first. And then, you know, I started doing it, um, you know, kind of a plan thing. So, all right, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.